that is a word from the Lord this morning. If you would, I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. Old Testament reading, the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 10 through 14, uh, is what we will read this morning. When you're there, I want you to stand with me as we read the word of God together. Exodus, chapter 10, verses, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 10. 10 through 14. Amen. Amen, if you're there. Amen. And the scriptures read thus, it says, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou may bringest forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, for this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. What a beautiful calling. Amen. God was calling Moses, sending him to do what thus said the Lord. And that made me think about something this morning as I was reading the scriptures early on and I preparing this message for you this morning, it made me think about how God talks to us. And you know, when I started to read this story, I realized that, you know, God is not only talking to us. I mean, he's not only talking to Moses, but he's talking to all of us. And that's my message for you this morning. God is calling you. Amen? It's simple. God is calling you. Amen? It's like the phone is ringing. And it's for you. Amen? And, and when you think about it, you know, when we look at the second, we see this is one of the most profound callings that God made. God called Moses. Not because of who Moses was, but in spite of who Moses was. Moses had gone through some stuff. And Moses was one of those kind of people that you might look back at his past and say, well, could, could God call him? Would God speak to him? You know? And I'm telling you this morning that God is saying the same thing to you and I. God is calling all of us. Amen? He is calling on everybody's life. And he's calling you. The phone is ringing, Jesse. It's for you. God is calling you this morning. He's calling you because he's got a plan for your life. And he has a mission for your life. Each and every one of you, God is calling. But you know, God is calling us. And sometimes, you know, we got we to gotta think about it. You know? Uh, what might look like an impossible task for you to do, you know, that might give you some trepidation. You might start thinking, oh, I don't know if I could do what God is calling me to do. That's what Moses was thinking. And then Moses had to get some clarification. He was like, well, God, if you call to me, who am I? That I should go and do this. And then when people want to know, because you know people want to know that you're credible, what shall I tell the people when they ask me? Well, who, who, what's his name? You're saying God told you. What's God's name? And God said, just tell the people that I am, that I am. I said, I am, said. And I am is telling you this morning that he has a calling on your life. God is calling you, but will you take the call? Amen? You know, it's just like, it's just like what we're doing today. You know, the Bible tells us that Moses... Uh, was called by God in a very strange way. When he got the calling, when Moses' phone rang, he had a strange kind of ringtone to his phone. His ringtone came in the form of a burning bush. 
When he saw this bush burning off in the distance, he realized that something is strange about that. It was getting his attention. When your phone goes off, it gets your attention. And some of y'all, you know how fancy we got today with our phones. You know, the phones have different range. You can make a different ringtone for different people, amen, different situations. The boss has a ringtone and your, your loved one has a ringtone. So when the boss ringtone go off, you look and say, oh, that's the boss. So you know who's calling you by the ringtone. But Moses knew the ringtone was strange to him. He didn't know if he should answer it, Brother Pi Joe. He was thinking, I don't know, that's a strange way of God getting my attention. You see? But God has a ringtone for all of us, amen? He speaks to all of us in different kinds of ways, amen? But what's strange uh, to one person may be familiar to the person, uh, the other person, amen? Moses hid his face. Hit his face. He, he just didn't want to have to deal with this, you see? But I'm going to do what God has called me to do is what Moses had to contend with, you see? He told them, he said, you go to Pharaoh and you're going to tell Pharaoh to let the people go. When Moses got a little concerned, God said, don't worry, I'm going to be with you. And I'm telling you this morning, no matter what God calls you to do, he's going to be with you. He's going to be with you. He's going to help you say what you have to say. He's going to help you do what you have to do. He's going to help you walk the way you have to walk. Amen. God is going to be with you every step of the way when he has a calling on your life. God is calling you. The phone is ringing. It's for you. Now you think about it, Moses was reluctant, like a lot of people who are reluctant to do what God is calling them to do. You know, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? How am I going to prove to the people that God is talking to me? You see, God speaks to us in his own way. And sometimes it's just that quiet voice of right and wrong. When you're dealing with something in your life and you're trying to figure out, is God really calling me? Is God really talking to me? When you understand how righteous it is, when there's a decision that has to be made and you know that all you have to think about, is it right or is it wrong? You know if it's right, it's God. Amen? Because God is good. And guess what? He's good all the time. And he's always righteous. Amen? But you know, sometimes we want to screen our calls. And I guess Moses was in a way kind of screening the call as he's talking to God. He's trying to get some clarification. God, are you really talking to me? Are you, are you, you know, and how am I going to do this? You know, God said, don't worry about it. I'm going to be with you. We do that sometimes. You know, when God is speaking to your heart in a very quiet way, and you know it is the right thing to do. You know it's the right thing to say. You know it. But you vacillate between what you ought to say and what you ought to do. Because you start thinking sometimes you let the devil get the best of you, you know. When there's just something good, you know you ought to do it. And that devil sitting there telling you, oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Let him fi fix it for themselves, you know. Let it just work out the best way it can work out. If there's something good you can do and you know that you can do it, do it. Amen. 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 God is calling. You know, he said, well, pastor, how do you know that? Because I spend my time trying to discern the word of God. That's what I do. And the Bible tells us that, you know, as a matter of fact, as ministers of the gospel, we have to study the word of God because the scripture tells us that. It says study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's the word of God. And I follow what God tells me that he told me to do that in 2 Timothy. He said, you got to do that. 2.15, he said, that's what you have to do. Study the word. Not to prove it to man, but to prove yourself to God. So I have to prove myself to God by following God's word. I don't preach a sermon that's not based in the scripture. Because the scripture is the word of God. And if the scripture is the word of God and I give it to you, I'm telling you what thus said the Lord. And I'm telling you this morning, God is calling. The phone is ringing. It's for you. He's talking to you. And you know, sometimes we do that with our phones. We look at the phone, we see somebody calling, and we got that fancy stuff, you know, the call the ID. So we can look at it and we can think, well, I'll call them back later. 
We don't want to take that call. And you know many times, phone ring, you don't answer it, you'll get it later. I tell you, I see, I see what it is, I'll, I'll talk to them later. Because you don't want to talk to them now. And a lot of us don't want to talk to God now. God is telling you to do something because he's called you to do it. But you put it off because you want to do what you want to do now. Amen? Amen. That's why so many people are, 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 are rejoicing that the ballroom is open. Amen? Yeah, they didn't open up the bar. That's what they've been waiting on that, Jesse. I can't wait till the mayor opens up the city so we can go in the bars. They know that's not what the focus ought to be. Why don't you feel that way about church? I can't wait till Sunday morning comes so I can go in the house of God and worship God. You know why? Because that's the right thing to do. But you're putting it off. Because you don't want to do that. You want to do what you want to do first. That's like putting the call on hold. I'll get back to it. But let me tell you something. Time is winding up, Lord. We're living in some of the end times, amen. And the day of tomorrow is not promised to anybody. If you got something good to do, you need to do it right now, amen. God is calling you this morning, amen. A lot of people don't want to go where God is calling them to go to. You see, he's calling you to holy ground. Holy ground is a place of elevation. When you come into the church, because God has called you to come into the church, you're standing on holy ground. And God is ready to elevate you. God is going to take you a little higher than you've been before. He wants to elevate you. He wants to change your life. And let me tell you something. Every time when, when, you, when we use the word God is calling, a lot of times people confuse that. As if the calling means you have to be a preacher or a minister. No, 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 that's not always the case. God is calling you to do uh, some simple things in your life. When I say God is calling you to holy ground, he is calling you to elevate you, to help you to become a better person than you were yesterday. He's just trying to elevate your status, amen? He's trying to elevate your character. God is calling you to fertile ground. When he calls you into the temple, when he calls you into the church, he's calling you to a place where you can stand on not only solid ground, on higher ground, but on fertile ground. Because in fertile ground, they ain't grow. God is calling you that you might grow. A lot of people get old, but they don't grow. Y'all know a lot of people that, just, that turn out to be nothing but old fools. All they ever did was get old. And instead of getting wiser, they got dumb. It's the truth. Say amen and say ouch. <laughs> but God is calling you to solid ground. You know, because some people hang around long enough just to continue to be stupid. Yes. What is being stupid? I'm being stupid. In other words, somebody is lying to you, somebody is deceiving you, somebody is telling you all the wrong things. They lie to you every day and you still fall. We've been going through that for four years. I'm sorry, that's the truth. Amen. Some people don't want to hear the truth. I'd rather hear a lie. Because if you'd rather hear a lie, then you're not following God. Lying is something God hates. Amen? Proverbs 6. Read it. When you have questions and decisions to make and things are heavy on your mind, God is calling you to prayer. Amen? He's on the phone saying, you need to pray. You need to talk a little bit more to me. You need to listen a little bit more to what I have to say. That's what prayer will do for you. It will help you to understand the calling that God has on your life. Calling you to prayer. Mm -hmm. God is calling you. The phone is ringing. It's for you. You know. And people don't want to deal with that. Sometimes we do some of that. You know, some of these things like, you know, you talk to some young folk. You know, talk to a child. You want to know the truth? Ask a child. If you want to know the truth, ask a child. Man, when I used to get dressed sometimes, uh, I remember a couple of times back, I, I, would, I would talk to my, my, one of my granddaughters. And if I really wanted to know how something looked, or how, you know, something looked, I just asked them. Tell me how does it look? Oh, that looks fine. And if it didn't, they'll tell you. <laughs> when their little children go, ew. <laughs> Amen. You can take that off. But if you want to know the truth, ask a child. They'll tell you. <laughs> kids, man, I remember, you know, the, the kids would answer the door. 
your mama telling them in the background that insurance man, insurance man should call around door to door, knocking on the door. How I many people here know that mama told you, tell them I'm not home. You go to the door and tell the church. My mama says she's not home. <laughs> child told the truth. You was expecting the child to lie. But I'm telling you this morning, God has a calling on your life, and God is calling. The phone is ringing. It's for you. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's got a calling on everybody's life because he has a word for everybody. He's speaking to you. And you know, here's the thing. You know, it's like, we, you know, and I'll mix in some of the technology that we have, that we have to deal with this. In the book of Exodus chapter 6, verse 3, the scripture says, And I appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and my name was God Almighty by them. That's what they called me. My name, Jehovah, was not known to them. And he pointed that out. That's pointed out in the scripture. My name, Jehovah, was not known to them. And so, you know, if you ever think about it, the reality is that the word Jehovah has been uh, uh, translated from a German translation. That's how we get Jehovah. Because Jehovah itself, the word Jehovah, is not really a Hebrew word. It's not, you can't spell it out in Hebrew. But in the Hebrew, God's name was spelled out Y-H-W-H. You know, because Hebrew has consonants and no vowels. But we have to add some vowels in, into it so it can be something we can pronounce because we all don't speak Hebrew. Amen? So I'm saying that because sometimes, and, 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 and I point that out to you, is because sometimes that's the way we want to be able to communicate. In other words, that's like a text message, or that's like a call ID message. So when we look at the phone, we hear the phone, we know it's ringing, but when we want to verify the call, we have to see the name. The name helps to verify who's calling us. And all of us have a phone now. When somebody calls, we can look at the caller ID and we can actually see the name. And that's important to people. And why are you saying that, Pastor? I'm saying that because it's important to us today to see the name of who's calling us. We don't answer calls when, when we don't see the name. Well, that's a number. I don't know that number. I'm not answering it. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Amen. But if you see the name, oh, that's John. Oh, that's Gerald. My children call me. I see Damon, I see Devin. I don't even know their phone number. You know what they told me? They said, Dad, we don't know your number either. We just see Dad. Because <laughs> it's the call of ID that we have, to, we have to see the name. And the people wanted to know God's name in the Bible. What's the name and how's it spelled? How do we say it? God had to point it out. Well, they didn't know me. They wanted me. They wanted to call me by my name. But when God answered Moses, and when the spelling came out in Hebrew, it's Y-H-W-H. But then God told him. He clarified it with Moses. He said, don't worry about it. Just tell him I am. And that's all it that meant. I am. In other words, I am that I am. I am the Lord. I am your healer. I am your deliverer. I am your provider. I am your salvation. I am your source of everything. Amen? You can stand on the things that I'm telling you. You see, God is calling, the phone is ringing, it's for you. He isn't calling on your life. God is calling you just like he called Moses and so many other people in the Bible. God wants you to serve him by serving others. God wants you to spend some time praying and talking to him. God wants to open up your heart. And God says if you open up your heart, not only do you open up your heart, but open up your ears. The Bible says, he who have ears, let him hear. Hear the word of God. Understand what God is saying. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you this morning, I'm not trying to make you feel good. I'm trying to make you feel God. God is calling. Amen? How do you know? Listen, so, so, so what I'm saying to you this morning is this. Sometimes in our lives, like I said, the calling is not always, oh, he's calling you to be a minister. He's calling you to be the deacon. He's calling you to sit on the board. He's calling you to be a better person. He's calling you to do something for somebody else. He's calling you to do something for somebody other than yourself. Amen? He's calling you to be nice. 
He's calling you to be, be helpful when you can. The calling is always, and sometimes the calling comes when you least expect it. God will call you when you're doing something that you think is more important to, than listening to him. And that's the truth. We put talking off, put, we put off talking to God sometimes because we're too busy. I'll talk to God after a while. Well, let me tell you something. I'll give you, uh, this is something that happened to me just not long ago. Just, just last week. I was driving home. And I had a day at work that I was busy. And I got a lot of things done. And then I realized I was able to get off early. And I said, oh, man, I'm going to get off early, Gerald. So I'm getting off early. You know, when you get off early, man, you just like, you feel better than Fred Flintstone. Y'all know how Fred was. When, when the bell rang, doop, then Fred, Fred would slide down that dinosaur and was out the door. But I was like, man, I'm going home. I'm getting off early. And when I go home, let me see. I'm just, man, I, I, I was kind of tired because I was up early. Work. I'm getting off early. I'm going home, man. I'm going to relax and just, I couldn't wait. I'm just, man, I can't wait to get home. Weaving through the traffic, trying to get home because I'm off early. And I think it's right around Calliope, right? Because I live on the West Bank. And just as you turn Calliope to get up on the on-ramp of the bridge, they got a lot of homeless people out there. And as I pulled up there, Sister Nettie, when I pulled up and I was at the red light, and I looked across the street and I saw some people uh, parked to the side feeding the homeless. They were giving out plates. And I just looked at them. I looked over there and I said, oh, that's some things that they're giving out plates of food. And I saw one guy go over there and as he walked over, then he stopped, and he's kind of walking back and forth, and, and then he just kind of walked over looking a little dejected. And I said, oh my God, they didn't give the guy a plate of food? From the distance, from where I was, you know, you can't always judge something from where you are, but once I realized that they didn't give this poor guy a plate of food, but when I looked, they had run out. And that's what it was. It wasn't that they didn't give him a plate of food, but you know, they, they, they only have so much food. They're giving out all these little containers of food. And he didn't get one, so he just kind of turned around, he started to walk away, and then the phone rang. My phone rang, uh, Brother Deacon. And it was God. And he saw, he said, you saw what just happened? I said, yes, Lord. He said, well, go and, and, and get that man something to eat. So, before I made the turn, rather than turn and go up the bridge, I kept going straight. I went up to uh, St. Charles Avenue to Burger King and I bought about 40 burgers. And I said, well, I'm gonna go back and not only feed that guy, because if he didn't get one, then there's probably a few other people who didn't get something to eat. And so I circled back after I got the burgers. Man, I show you how people are walking to Burger King and ordered them burgers, and the lady looked at me, whew, that's gonna take a while. <laughs> the manager. I say, wow, you don't want this business? But she said that, and I said, well, I got time. And the people who want this food got time. And uh, so I got all the food, and I drove back. And I pulled up, and I put the stuff on the back of the truck, and I started passing out hamburgers. I'm doing what God told me to do. You know why, I, you know why I'm confident that God told me to do it? Because my mind was to do something else, get home and feed myself. But God said, did you see what just happened? Do something about it. Yes, if you can do some good, then do it. Amen. And so I went and, I, and so I passed out all the burgers and then after I passed out everything I had, another guy come running to me. He said, oh, you don't have any more? I said, oh man, I'm so sorry. And he's like, oh, okay, all right, thank you so much. I'm going back to Burger King. <laughs> I went back and I got some more burgers and I bought some chicken. I did. I saw some. I saw two little children, and it broke my heart. It broke my heart when I saw the children among the homeless. And I bought uh, some chicken nuggets because I know children love chicken nuggets. I bought the chicken nugget just for those children I saw, and I went back and. When I was coming back, people were born, I'll tell you, they, they are in need of food. So when I come back, the lady saw me before I could make the U-turn. She was looking and she was so excited. And I was so excited to get over there. And I gave the kids their 
nugget. Said, yeah, you've got to get these to those children. And the little children, they were so excited. Yeah. But you know, the children don't know they're homeless. The children don't know that they're poor. The children just know that they're in a situation where this is the way it is. You know, and so I'm saying that to you is because when God calls you, answer the call. Amen. Answer the call. Like I said, he is not the biggest thing in the world. He just called you to help somebody along the way. That's the calling. God did it because, let me tell you something, Jesse. My mind was on something that my mind was all wrapped up on me. I was only thinking about me. I was thinking about what I had gone through. I was thinking about my day. But think about their day. And when you think too much of yourself, God will put you right there. God will call you up. Because he's watching. And that little bitty thing that you do is to call in at your answer for God. Because Jesus himself said, that which you do for the least of them, you've done it to me. Amen? I'm going to say this and i got to go. But I'm telling you, God is calling and the phone is ringing and it's just for you. God is calling you to higher ground. God is ready to take you out of your comfort zone. Amen? God is ready to comfort you in your hour of sorrow. The phone is ringing. It's for you. God is telling you that he wants you to be better today than you were yesterday. You worry about tomorrow, but don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Be thankful about what's going on in your life today. If you can be good, do good, then do something for somebody else. God is calling, the phone is ringing, and it's for you. I'm telling you, he's ready to fix your finances. He's ready to mend your broken heart. He's ready to give you peace in a time of storm. God is calling you this morning. I'm telling you, God is ready. God is willing. God is able. He's calling you to higher ground. I'm telling you this morning because I want you to do what thus said the Lord. I am sent me. God is calling you. And like Isaiah said, who shall I send? Who will go for us? I said, Lord, here I am. Send me. God is calling. You got to answer the call. God is calling you to holy ground. God is calling you to worship in the temple. God is calling you to put your arm on the altar. God is calling you to read the word. God is calling you to sing your song. God is calling you to clap your hand. God is calling you to stomp your feet. God is calling you to glory. God is calling you in this season. God is calling you right now. God is on the phone and it's for you. Somebody ought to give God some praise this morning. The phone is ringing. It's for you. It's for you. God, I just want to be the best person that I can be. That's all. God, I want to be better than I was yesterday. That's all. It's simple. So God is calling you. He's calling you to do something. And I don't minimize what God has placed into your heart and what God is ready to place into your spirit. When I say that, when I say that, it can be something simple. It can be something even bigger. Because maybe he is calling you into the ministry. Maybe he is calling you to sing praises. Maybe he is calling you to some auxiliary office in the church. Maybe he is calling you to be a missionary. Maybe he is calling you to be one of his witnesses. But I just want you to know that he is calling. And you need to answer right now, this day. So I say this to you as we get ready to go here, but I want to pray. And I want you to pray with me. And I want you watching me right now on Facebook. I want you watching me right now on YouTube. Or I want you watching me right now at our uh, website, gentellegreaterharvest.com. I want you to pray with me right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for you, what you are doing in our lives. And we thank you for what you have yet to do. As servants, God, we open up our hearts our minds, 
our ears, our spirit. We open up everything to you right now. Pour into us your spirit. Make me whole, Father. Bless me, heal me, deliver me. Lift me up, elevate me, God. Help me to be better that I might serve you, God. That I might serve you by serving your people. That I might be a better person. That I might do your will. Help me, God, to be what you want me to be. Help me, God, to be what you need me to be. And God, I thank you. I pray, God, your blessings upon all of us who hear my word, who hear my voice. I pray that you will bless these people and not only them, but the families that they represent. Call us to be what you need us to be. Help us to know and discern that it's you. Walk with us, talk with us. Put your arms around us. Embrace us with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask these prayers. Amen. Bless the Lord. Somebody give God some praise.